You're listening to the What the Wrestling Podcast, the show that brings you all things wrestling with your host, RJD. Oh, you already know what time it is. Rampage Smackdown results. I got news for y'all, but it ain't coming today. It's coming tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you want to know how to stay tuned, here we go. As always, follow me, RJD, RJD10K on Instagram, RJ699 on Twitter, RJD199 on Snapchat. Most importantly, follow what? The Wrestling on Facebook and YouTube and TikTok. Follow me at What The Wrestling on Anchor. Follow me at What The Wrestling on Spotify. Look, man. We all know what's going on with NXT and Triple H. I'm going to get crazy into it manana. So stay tuned for that on Sunday, 1-9-2022. I will be reviewing Battle of the Belts, which is coming on. Actually, no. Yeah, uh, Battle of the Belts, which is coming on today, if I am not mistaken, at 8. That should be fun. Let me just confirm. I think Battle of the Belts is tonight. Yep, Battle of Bells tonight, 8 o'clock. That should be fun. I keep it. It's so crazy. I keep forgetting today's Saturday. It's like bananas. But let us discuss the smacketh of the down and the AE dub ram of the page. Going to be probably a quick review today. Just going to run over some things, give you my thoughts, and see where shit is going. But let's get into it. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Tis I, RJD here. Welcome. I can't do that without my throat cracking. Resident Evil 4, shout them out. Welcome to What The Wrestling. This is the podcast where we talk about all things wrestling. I am your host. RJD here, and we are here to talk about Rampage and SmackDown, but before I get into Rampage and SmackDown, just want to say, if my button will work, thank you for everybody showing me love, a lot of people thought I had the Rona over the past two weeks, I did not have the Rona, but 
Uh, I definitely was sick as hell for the first week. Just now feeling about 95%. Still have a tad bit of a cough. So we got five more percent to go and then I'll be back to good old 100% oh per percent but appreciate everybody showing me love everybody giving me phone calls everybody calling me i do know some people right now that have the rona shout out to all the misfits um misfits always show me love shout out to everybody following my what the wrestling pages and all my friends and family showing me love i appreciate all y'all thank you very much aew rampage let's talk about rampage first uh, first things first, I want to wish Jake Atlas a speedy recovery. Um, he has a leg injury. I hope it's not too serious. Hopefully, he just tweaked something, and that was the end of it. He was having a damn good match, too, so he fought Adam Cole. Bay Bay. And this was one hell of a match. Pretty good. Both guys showing off their athleticism, Adam Cole is probably one of the top 10 wrestlers probably maybe top five wrestlers in the world depending on who you ask but the end of the match came when jake atlas was supposed to do a springboard and get super kicked but he did the springboard and got super kicked landed wrong tweaked his knee he was supposed to get hit by the panama sunrise but he could not even do the flip so they started talking adam cole called an audible real quick hit him with the heel hook on the injured knee he fake attack he he fake tried to not tap but he ended up tapping bobby fish kyle o'reilly came out and they were about to beat him down again when the orange one orange cassidy came out with the best friends and had the heels running away now jake atlas hurt himself and man as soon as he landed i was like oh that looks serious because he actually he went for the Panama Sunrise and he like couldn't even, there was nothing on that leg. Like he couldn't put anything on it. So like I said, I just hope he's okay. You never want to see anybody get hurt. Like I said on my last stream the other day, AEW got hit with the injury bug on uh, Wednesday night. It was, <coughs> excuse me, it was bad, but the match was pretty good. Go back and watch it if you missed it. Hopefully, uh, Jake Atlas impressed enough. He is now all elite. So shout out to him. Go get your money. Go get your money, brother. He is now all elite. Uh, kind of a surprise. Surprise, motherfucker. Didn't expect TK, Mr. Tony Khan, to be spending money on Jake Atlas. But you know what? Another wrestler got paid during these uncertain times. I'm all for it. While WWE is releasing half of their fucking roster, AE Dub is making sure people are employed. So, shout out to them. All good. Next, send Hook. God damn it. Hook versus Aaron Solo. This was good. Hook was in a little bit of trouble. But after a short test of strength, Hook got the other hand. TK Marshall, uh, QT Marshall was out there. TK Marshall, you hear me? <laughs> you stupid. QT Marshall was out there uh, being devious as always. Uh, Hook had him in a submission with his legs. It's like a leg choke, choke out submission. Uh, several body shots in the corner after he escaped that submission. Uh, Hook basically got the upper hand, took control, hit him with a, a, another suplex, put him in a, 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 crotch lock, a crotch lift suplex, played to the crowd, Hit him with a couple of jawbreakers. You already know when he starts hitting you in the face. He then sets up for the red rum. See you later. Good match. Hook. They got Hook is not a heel, man. They're gonna turn his ass in. Crowd is gonna turn him into the baby face whether they want it, whether they want him to or not. QT Marshall then got in Hook's face and had and ate a, I believe it was a Saido suplex for his troubles. So shout out them. Then we had Jamie Hayter and the Doctor, Brick Baker, DMD versus Riho and Ruby Soho. This was a solid match. The end came when Jamie Hayter decked her friend and the Doctor, Brick Baker. And 
after she decked her, she got rolled up for a three count. And Riho pinned her. Ahead of their match tonight, which Riho definitely ain't winning. <laughs> <coughs> but this was okay. It was... <coughs> had some good spots, good energy. I really love Riho. Riho is amazing. I really, really like Jamie Hayter. Jamie Hayter is severely underrated and i want this woman to pick up some goddamn wins on tv i'm tired of seeing her lose because jamie hater is really good Britt baker is who she is she's great and ruby soho great as well solid stuff by the ladies here then we had eddie kingston and proud and powerful versus daniel garcia and 2.0 these small foes beat i can't even tell you what the hell happened here all i can tell you is that Mark Henry was about to <laughs> give these guys the pre-fight main event uh, segment. And 2.0 starts talking junk. Eddie Kingston just looks at Proud and Powerful. Santana and Ortiz shrugs his shoulder. Says, you know what? And they just walk off. That's it. They just walk off. <laughs> Mark Henry is sitting there like, okay. And 2.0, he's like, you guys don't understand. You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? How many times do we have to tell you? Can't I can't do the accent, but I love the accent he has. It's dope. I know people in my old block that speak just like that. So it's like, <laughs> brings back memories. But uh, 2.0 then got bombarded by Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. All hell started. All hell broke loose and all hell started to, all hell started to take place. And it was to... To be honest, it was craziness. It was craziness. Um, so there were trash cans, there were tables, there was a, a lot of stuff. Santana and Ortiz hit a combo of kick you in the face, kick you in the face, discus clothesline for the win. But Garcia kept uh, Garcia and 2.0 kept beating them up. Chris Jericho then got they uh, taped up Kingston to the ropes. But then Kingston and Jericho, I mean, Jericho came down after they taped Kingston to the ropes, saved Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz, and that is how they went off the air. Good stuff here. Rampage, solid show, the quickest one hour in wrestling you will ever see. Good shit. Let's go to SmackDown. Your tribal chief opened the show. Acknowledge him, goddammit. And he came out and said he had a lot of time to reflect while he had the Rona. <coughs> Excuse me. And he said two people he never wants to see again is Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Brock comes out, does his best impression of Paul Heyman. And then says, listen, let's give the people what you want. He said, you got what you want. I got what I want. Let's give the people what they want. Title for title. Let's kill the noise and fight each other let's fucking do it play to the crowd roman play to the crowd and he says you know what no i'm the tribal chief you will things happen when i want them to happen this is my show it'll happen on my time you don't like it too mother effing bad so shout out to roman here he was like get the fuck out of here nope not giving you what you want f you then uh <laughs> Heyman started talking. He was like, "Don't talk, don't don't talk to uh, don't talk to Roman like that." He was like, "Listen, uh, I, I, listen, I used to worship Roman Reigns. I used to do this for Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is everything. I mean, he did this for me. He did that for me. I did this for him. I did that for him. He got the title match because of me. He did this because of me. He, he, how could you talk to me like that?" And then Brock told him to shut the hell up, like multiple times. And after that, he ate a Superman punch, and Roman got the hell up out of Dodge. And he was like. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, Do it! Just do oh, it! That's the wrong sound bite. Anyway, doesn't matter. He was like, I'm out of here. I don't, I hate both of you. That's it. But later on in the evening, Sonya Deville, uh, Adam Pierce informed Sonya Deville that he was instructed to determine a WWE Universal Title Challenger for Roman. Went to Roman's locker room, told them. He said, listen, I don't give a shit. Choose who you want. I'm the tribal chief. Nobody on this roster. Uh, there's nobody on this roster that I haven't smashed already. Now get the hell out. 
This was during the main event, Usos versus The New Day. So, at the end of that match, who walks through the door but his old shield buddy, Seth freaking Rollins. They should have one hell of a match. That's going to be great. So, your tribal chief. I like this. So, I like... Let's talk about the segment before I move on. So, I like this segment. Um, I like the fact that Paul Heyman is literally gushing over Roman. And Brock had to tell him, shut the hell up. And attention to detail. Because Brock even told him, listen, you don't got to do this. And then he imitated Paul Heyman. Ladies and gentlemen... I'm Brock Lesnar. And he did the whole reigning, defending, undisputed WWE champion. Then he said, acknowledge me, you know, playing to Roman. I like the whole banter back and forth. Brock Lesnar's doing like the best talking of his life. Like, uh, you know, Paul Heyman always did the talking for him, but not like the man couldn't talk, but he just, the least amount of talking he does, the better because he's a tank. He doesn't need to talk. He smashes people. And Roman is doing the best work of his life. So I like the banter back and forth between these two. This was good. Nothing wrong with anything here, according to me. I think this is great. I think WWE needs to get rid of the brand split. I mean, they're firing so many goddamn people. They they ain't gonna have they don't have enough people to support a brand split. Cause it's like every other day is this person, this person, this person has been released. Budget cuts. So, I, I really don't understand why they even still have a brand split. They need to hurry up and get rid of this shit. Put everybody, unify everything. Make everybody fight for one title. Have Roman run through everybody because that's, that's what you want. You can call upon Brock Lesnar when you need him. And that's great. And then that's all she wrote. That's it. Smooth. It's all good. So, I don't understand. They need to figure that out. Uh, end the damn brand split. Put people on both shows. End the brand split. Call it a fucking day. That's it. Try it true, simple, to the point. That's all that matters. They do that, they'll be okay. Because they... The women's division? What women's division? Tag team division? What tag team division? They barely got people... If one person gets hurt, like Drew McIntyre, they literally have nobody to replace him. They've got no baby faces to replace them. Nobody for Roman to fight. They got to go pluck people from Monday Night Raw. Seth freaking Rollins. Just to... Oh, no, he's on SmackDown now. But they got to pluck people from Monday Night Raw. I got to hit my hit myself with the button again. You stupid. They got to pluck people from Monday Night Raw after Seth Rollins just to be able for this man to, to defend the damn title. So they need to end the brand split. Just end it. It was fun while it lasted. You do, your roster is not big enough. You know who could probably do a brand split? AEW. Because they got a huge freaking roster. So, I, I mean, they need to just end that shit. We had Rick Boogs beating Sami Zayn by, uh, I think, Roll Up, if I'm not mistaken. We also had uh, Knox, uh, Johnny Knoxville and a bunch of other people confirming their 2022 Royal Rumble appearance. Uh, gotta promote Jackass Forever. Rick Boogs got the, the win. Fine by me. Um, cool. We also had SmackDown World Champion Charlotte. She entered the Royal Rumble as well as uh, a bunch of WWE veterans like Lita, Bella Twins, Rashawn McCool, Kelly Kelly, Summer Rae, and Impact Women's Champion Mickey James. The Forbidden Door has opened. Surprise, motherfucker. Or has it? This is very interesting. I don't know what's going on, but Impact is now working with WWE. Wow. Even if it's for one night. Wow. Very interesting. Charlotte Flair then, uh, Charlotte Flair came out, popped some shit, talked to Naomi. Naomi came out and said, listen, uh, just fight me right now. She said, you ain't earned it. You ain't earned it. You ain't earned it. But, you know, Naomi was just like, just bring it, bitch. So they had themselves a little fight, and Naomi was about to win via countout. But Sonya Deville said, you cannot win this match by countout or DQ. Uh, or by countout or disqualification. Only pinfall of submission. And then natural selection got hit, and Naomi lost. And Sonya Deville basked in her glory. 
Happy Corbin and Matt Cat, Matt Cat Moss beat the Viking Raiders via pinfall. The match came after we had a Happy Talk segment where Moss dressed up as Drew McIntyre and talked some shit about the injured uh, Drew McIntyre who's out with a neck injury. More on that tomorrow. So look forward to that. Then we had the Usos versus the New Day for the 100th time in a very, very good match. And the Usos win with the 3D. Now it's called the 1D. And this was a good back and forth match with tables uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. The New Day and the Usos could fight 100 times. And 100 out of 100 times, it would be at least a good match. Let alone great or fantastic match. So, this was your SmackDown definitely interested about the Roman stuff um, they are trying they are trying in regards to the Roman Reigns stuff I mean I don't know what the plans are for Wrestlemania but what they need to do is just combine the goddamn titles and call it a day because they don't have enough to stretch these divisions they just freaking don't so let's see what they decide to do if they're smart, they'll end the brand split, unify the titles, end the women's brand split, unify that title, end the U.S. and IC title, and unify that title. Three titles, two shows, everybody fighting for those titles. If you lose, you go to the middle or back of the line. You have feuds that you can work on in between there, and you do pro wrestling right. This brand split is trash. Uh, they don't have enough firepower or star power to continue it have it like you had it back in the day with stone cold and the rock and triple h and booker t and all of these guys and the undertaker and john michaels and mankind and all these guys on raw and smackdown there sometimes you might put some b guys on smackdown sometimes you might not but have everybody fighting on both shows and if you don't want somebody to come to both shows have them do a video segment backstage they could do a backstage interview, do a backstage brawl, tape it. It's fine. If you tape it, it's okay. Put it on air there. They're on both shows, but they didn't have to travel. You already pre-taped it. There's creative ways to do this. They need to end the brand split immediately. That's my take on it. That's all I got to say. That is all I got for you guys. Listen, don't forget to like, hit the goddamn like button. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. RJD here. Go follow the YouTube. Go follow the Anchor. Go follow everything that I have. Rock with me. Follow my stuff. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. I will respond to everybody who leaves a comment. And I am out. Everybody be safe out here. Peace. Dom DeMarco.